Well, hey there, church, and all of you who are joining us for the first time. Welcome to our online service once again. We're so glad that you're with us. As you go into today's service, just want to encourage you. Let's open up our heart as we worship Jesus. Get your Bibles ready for the sermon. We've got all our social media links that should appear on the screen. And if you want to reach out to us, feel free to do so. Feel free also to share the sermon today if you felt encouraged by it. And if you have any prayer requests or anything you need, we are here for you. Church, enjoy the service today. God bless you. Take care. Well, good morning, church. Hope you're doing good this morning. Why don't you just stand with us wherever you are in your living room. We're just going to praise God. Amen. Here we go. When night has fallen and fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength When my mind says I'm not good enough God, you're enough for me years ago I had a client, an elderly lady. She was 92 years old and during our conversation she mentioned to me that she had been married for 65 years. That's a really, really long time. 
Anyway, so the obvious question I asked her was, how did you manage to be married for that long? What is your secret? And her answer was really simple, but really powerful and applicable for us. She said, we had such a long marriage because of our commitment to each other. You see, I learned from her that long-term success depends on our commitments, not the seasons we go through in life. When we were talking, she mentioned to me that they went through a lot of difficult times, tough seasons, ups and downs. But throughout all of that, they stayed committed to each other, and that resulted in 65 years of marriage. How wonderful. We can apply this to so many areas in our lives. So today, I want to, I want to focus on our giving, our tithing to God. You see, what determines our long-term success isn't our season or what we're going through, it's our commitment to giving. I'm saying, God, I'm giving you, I'm making a commitment to you that I will give every week, every month, whatever our pay, pay dates are, I'll continue to give regardless of the season. Let me tie this in with the scripture. Galatians 6 verses 9 says, don't grow weary in doing good because in the proper time, you'll receive your reward if you don't give up. This lady and her, her husband had achieved such a great feat, 65 years of marriage, because they didn't give up. And so for us, it's the same thing. May we not give up on our commitments to God. May we not give up in our giving. Good morning. We are so glad that you have joined us. Isn't it great to be able to sing praises to God? We also love to worship Him. And so this morning, as we end the service, we hope you hang around because we have a new song that's been written by Grace Place. And it's just a song that you'll be able to worship God in and just enjoy His presence and just connect with Him. And so this morning, I wanted to speak about our relationship with God. I wanted to speak to Him about, I want to speak to you about Him being our Father. But before we begin, let's just open in prayer. Father, we thank You for this day. We thank You, Lord, that we can be here in Your presence, wherever we are, Lord, wherever Your people are, wherever we are watching, Lord, we are in Your presence. You are right there with us. So Lord, I ask You to touch our hearts and to change our lives today. I thank you, Lord, that as we hear your word, that we will fall even more in love with you, knowing that you want the very best for us always and that you care for us. So, Lord, we, we, our ears are open, our hearts are open to hearing what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, my Father, my Father in heaven, the most awesome Father, awesome God. We've been speaking about him over the last couple of weeks, just finding out who God is and that he is good and he is faithful. He is just. He is merciful. And uh, we're ending the series. I keep saying that every week almost, but we're going to come to an end at some point. And uh, I just wanted to focus on who God is to us. And as our Father, uh, I know we've read scriptures about Him being our Daddy and Lord. But today I just want to give you three points to remember who God is. Because I feel that we're not all on the same page when it comes to God and our relationship with Him. Sometimes we base our relationship on God with the people that we have around us, or perhaps with the fathers that we have had. And we may not have all had the fathers that we expected to have. But in life, when it comes to relationship, we need to base all our relationships on firstly and foremost on our relationship with God. If the other relationships aren't based on, on who God is, they're not going to last. They, they may fail. There may be troubles. And so we need to make sure that our relationship with God is number one. The thing about a relationship is that it is a two-way street. It's not just from God. Yes, God has chased after us. We've learned that God is always, He has done everything possible for Him, for, for us and for Him to be in a relationship. But what do we do about this relationship? Are we just there? Is God just there when things are going wrong? Or is He there for our convenience? Or is God there because we really love Him and we really actually consider Him through everything that we're going through, the good things that we go through, the bad things that we go through? Is He a part of our lives no matter what? Or is He just there when we actually need Him? And then we begin to use God and our relationship with Him. And so today, the title of this message is My Father, and He is your Father as well. When Jesus uh, prayed that prayer in Matthew, the model prayer, he said, our father, meaning God is not just his father, but he is our father. He is my father and he is your father. And this is the truth. He is your father and he wants the very best for you. We're going to read from a, a verse of scripture in a minute. But before we begin, I just want to bring your attention to this little key ring that I have. And it says, keep calm, your number one dad. 
keep calm, you're number one dad. Now, this key ring that I was given by my kids uh, many, many years ago, I kept this on my desk at home uh, at work. And it was after one of the services that we had here at Grace Place. Uh, one of the young guys in church came into my office. In fact, Aaron, Pastor Branham and Jay Francis' son, he came into the office and he looked down at this key ring and he had this real puzzled look on his face. And he kept looking at it and I said, what's wrong, Aaron? And he was learning to read in a way. He was still quite young. And he looked at this key ring and he said, keep calm. You're no one, Dad. And I thought to myself, I've never seen it that way. You're no one, Dad. And I thought, I know my kids didn't give it to me because I am not no one. They gave it to me because I am number one to them. But maybe in your life, and we can laugh at this, and I really had a good laugh because of the way he saw this. And that's why I've kept it in my office, because not only does it remind me of what my kids gave me, but I'm always reminded of young Aaron who said, keep calm, you're no one, dad. Maybe you feel like you're no one on more of a serious note. Maybe you feel like you are no one to other people. Maybe your dad has become no one to you. Maybe people around you in the relationships, you feel like you are no one and not number one. Today, I want to show you that you are number one to God and He can be number one in your life. It doesn't matter what background you have. You know, I know people have different backgrounds. People have different relationships. Maybe you, had a, you never knew your father and uh, it's affected your life in a great way and I believe it would affect your life. You didn't know your father or your father was never around. He was absent. Maybe you had an abusive father or an unloving father. Today, I want to show you from God's word that there is a father, our father in heaven, the creator of heaven and earth, who loves you so much. He loves you with an everlasting love, a love that is so great that we cannot understand it. And maybe our, our earthly fathers have let us down. Maybe they haven't been around, but there is a father in heaven who loves us so much. And I'm going to prove this to you. But if you could just open your Bibles to Psalm 139. I always say these are my favorite Psalms, but to be honest, this is probably my favorite Psalm. And if you've been at Grace Place long enough, you know I quote a lot from Psalm 139. It really is worth reading. So after the service, you read the whole Psalm. We're just going to read a few verses from the Psalm, from the New Living Translation. And we need to understand as we read this, that God thinks that you are number one. Even if no one else may think it, or you think that no one else may think it, God thinks that you are number one. Is He your number one? So how do we really know that? Well, thank you for asking. I'm going to answer that question. You know, I can hear your questions coming through right now. Thank you for asking. I'm going to answer it. So verse one, O Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down and you even know when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything that I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and you follow me and you place your hand of blessing on my head. The Bible says that God knows us. And this is my first point, if we could put it that way. The first thing I would like to encourage you with is that God knows you. He really and truly knows you. Not just the know that we, how we use the word. You know, I, I can say, I know you. It just mean, maybe means I know you exist or I know of you. But here, when, when the Bible says that God knows when I sit down and when I rise, it actually means that God has an intimate and a personal knowledge of who you are. He is personally and intimately involved in your life. He knows what you're going to think. He knows what you're going to say. He knows when you're coming, in, coming home. He knows when you're leaving. He knows when you're going to work and he knows when you're lazing around on the couch. And yet in all that knowing, you know, we, we know what we think. We know how we are. Even in God knowing all that we do, yet he still loves us so much. And the Bible actually ends here and he says, he places his hand of blessing on us. You might not want to know yourself or want to get to know other people, but God knows you and He knows you better than you even know yourself. You know, sometimes we don't receive what God has for us because we don't feel like we're worthy, but God knows you. Even in the, the, the place where you feel like you're unworthy, God knows you and He still loves you and He still wants to bless you. And we need to come to that place in our lives where we receive the blessing from God. That blessing is eternal life. That blessing is abundant life right here on this earth. And so we need to get to that place where we actually receive what God wants for us because He loves us so much and He knows us. 
There are things that He knows about you that you're still going to discover and things that I'm still going to discover. But I know because God knows and He loves me, He will help me through everything that I'm going to go through. And so there is blessing in knowing that God knows us. The second thing is this, He is with you. And that is such an encouragement to me to know that God is with me because there are times and there have been times in my life where I have been alone and there has been no one to call out to. But God is with us. He is always there, even when we don't know it. There's a word that we use for God. Sometimes it's the word omnipresent. And that simply means that God is present everywhere. He is always present wherever we are. And the Bible goes on to tell us how present He is. You know, God is always with us. A father provides safety. I remember when I was a kid, when my dad was at home, I felt safer automatically. It wasn't to say that my mom couldn't keep us safe. When we were kids, my dad was there there was safety. If my dad was there, we would feel this way. Knowing this, knowing that God is always with us means we can always feel like we're in a place of safety even when we're on dangerous ground or even when things are happening around us, He's there to protect us. And I can say this simply because Psalm 139 and verse 6 says, and read with me, it says, such knowledge of knowing everything about me is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Verse 7 says, I can never escape from your spirit. Why? Because he is with you. I can never get away from your presence because he is with you. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell in the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness... I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. Do you know that even if I go to the worst places on earth, even if I find myself in the most ungodly place, God is there. And that's what relationship is all about. He is there to save you. He is there to help you. Even if you didn't know, all you need to do is call out to Him and He's ready to save He's ready to deliver. He's ready to make whole. And so my encouragement is this, God is with you. He is with you wherever you go. But are you calling out to Him? Are you asking Him to help? Are you asking Him to save you from those places that you find yourself in that you don't really want to be in, but for some reason you're there? Call upon His name and you will be saved. And so God knows where you are. And finally, And these points are rather quick because we're going to spend some time worshiping God. And I know you're just going to hand over whatever you need to to Him. But the final point is this. He is thinking about you. Ah, That's also so amazing to think that the God who created the heavens and the earth, He's thinking about me. He loves me that much that He would spend time thinking about me. In fact, the Bible says that when Jesus uh, resurrected and and He went to heaven, He is now seated at the right hand of the Father and He is praying for us. He is praying for you. He is praying for me. And God is thinking about us. Verse 17 says, How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot even be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Even when I think badly about myself, Lord, you're thinking good things towards me. Even when I fail, you know that there is potential and I can pick myself up and I can carry on. As a father, God thinks good things about you and about me. For me, as a dad of my two children, I think of how I can bless them. Both Belinda and I, we think of ways how we can make life easier for them, how we can bless them, how we can help them. Because the truth is, we want the best for our children. The truth is that we know their strengths, we know their potential, but at the same time, We also know their weaknesses and we even know their failings. None of us is perfect, but yet we think about how we can constantly help our children in any way possible. We cannot even compare ourselves to the good God that our Father is in heaven. And He wants so much for us. He wants us to excel in everything. Even when we are weak, the Bible says He will be our strength. That's how much He wants to help us. That's why He is thinking about you and me Every single day, every moment of every day, you think, how can God do that? Well, because God can. He is all-knowing. He is omniscient. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. He is everywhere. And so He's thinking about you. 
and he's thinking about what he can do to help you. He's thinking about your life, the plans that he has made for your life. He wants you to excel and to, and to reach out and, and get to that point where you're fulfilling that purpose that he has placed on your life. But God, he's thinking about you. I'll never forget, and maybe some of you have heard the story, but I was about six years old. Here we're going back to my past, guys. And I was about six years old and my dad came home and one of the most unexpected things happened that day because back then in the 19 whatevers, uh, you know, you'd share things. You'd share, uh, I suppose you do that today, but you'd get a small packet of sweets and all the kids would share and, and there wasn't such a packet for you. And like today, you get a packet for yourself or a slab for yourself. Back then, it just didn't work that way. And I remember my dad came home and there were five of us at the time. My youngest brother, David, hadn't been born yet. And he brought us each a slab of chocolate. Like I said, never heard of, sorry dad if you're watching, but it's true, never been heard of it. And I mean, back then that was just, we were spoiled that day. But what was even more important to me was this. Uh, I was playing outside in the garden and uh, I remember my brothers and sisters were so excited. That's, this is my remembrance of this. And uh, my sisters ran out with a slab of pink chocolate and it was some superhero, superwoman or whatever. Uh, uh, that's what it was. And my brothers came out with, with Superman chocolates. They were slabs and it had a picture of Superman on the front. This was the most awesome thing we'd ever seen in our lives. And I ran to go and get mine. And you know, my favorite superhero is Spider-Man. Um, Spidey, he's the one. I mean, he can climb walls and, and uh, you know, he's, he's great. And my dad came out and he had a slab of chocolate for me. And guess what was on the front of that chocolate slab? Spider-Man. And I'll be honest with you. I thought to myself, especially later, I thought, my dad could have just got me Superman, but he didn't. He knows what I like. He knew, and he knew specifically that that's what I liked. He knew my brothers liked Superman, but I liked Spider-Man, and he remembered, and he was thinking about me when he bought that chocolate so that I would even have, a, I'd have an even greater experience with not just eating it, but I had a picture of, of Spider-Man there. And this is how God is with us. He knows everything that there is about you, and he wants to bless you in a different way that he'll bless somebody else because he knows what you want. He also knows what you need. Sometimes we don't even know that. and we, we want things that we actually don't need or we want things that are not good for us, but God knows what is good for you and He knows what's good for me and He wants to provide that kind of life for every one of us. But again, a relationship is a two-way street. God has done everything and He's provided it for us already, but what am I doing to reach out to Him? What am I doing in, in, in these situations? Imagine this, God knows us, He is with us and He is thinking about us. But what am I doing? Do I only think about God when oh, I'm in trouble? Do I only know that God exists when things are going wrong in my life? Do I only think that He's around when I really am in trouble and my life is at stake? Or is He always a part of my life? You see, because God knows us and He's thinking about us, we never ever have to feel unloved. And maybe you felt that way, especially by a father. You never have to feel unloved. You never ever have to feel alone. You never ever have to feel unwanted and you don't have to feel unsafe because God has got you. He loves you. He wants the best. I say that so often, but it's true. He does want the best. So many people feel like God is out there to punish them and to hurt them and tell them he's not. He wants the best for your life. So we need to work on our relationship with God because God has done everything for us. That's the father he is. How do we start by working on our relationship? Well, as we worship in just a minute, I want you to, before we begin, we're going to pray, but this is one way to connect with God. It is to pray. You know, when we pray, some people just pray the Our Father, and that's fine. You can pray it. But sometimes it's just words we say, and we don't actually know what we're saying or what we mean, that model prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. We can pray that, but we need to mean it and know what those words mean. But you know what's even greater is when we're just praying from our hearts, from here, and just speaking to God, just like I'm speaking to you right now, we don't have to put on a different accent or, or, or different anything. Don't have, we don't have to use big words. Just speak as we are and tell God how you're feeling and what you're going through, even though he already knows. Just tell him because that's when we begin to realize that we are in need of a savior, that we are in need of, of someone to help us through what we're going through. And just by speaking to him means our relationship with God begins to deepen. When we thank God for the things we've got and stop complaining about the things we don't have, our relationship will begin to deepen. When we praise Him like we did at the beginning of the service, our relationship begins to deepen. And when we worship Him as we're going to do right now, we begin to see God for who He is and our relationship will begin to deepen. And nothing we do here on earth will ever be without God. 
He will always be a part of every decision. He'll be a part of every up in our life and every down in our life. He will be a part of every moment simply because we know that He is our Father and He is a good Father and He is there for us no matter what. So this morning, I want you to prepare your hearts. Maybe there are things that you, you're going through in your life or things that have happened. You just feel like you don't know the love of a father or you don't feel like you deserve the love of a father. God loves you. You are his. Now make him yours in every way. Maybe you do have a relationship with him, but this thing has been holding you back. Just let it go and allow God to work in your life because he is there and he is better than any father. He's better than any good father, any bad father. He is better. He cannot be compared. So reach out to him. Even if you have a good father, good mother, good relationships, reach out to him because our relationships are successful based upon our relationship with him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you've made a way. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us to a place where we know that you are everything that we need. And so, Lord, that's what we want to declare today, that you are everything we need. We will silence ourselves and we will take time now. We'll close our eyes and just worship you for who you are, knowing that in these quiet moments that we have now and in this time of worship, that you'll speak to us. And so we're going to take this time. We're not going to rush through this and just tell you that we love you. Because, Lord, we know that you loved us first. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you that we can worship you. Even us, whatever we've been through, as human beings, mere human beings, we can worship you. So from our hearts, Lord, we lay everything down, all those burdens. We lay the past down at your feet. We empty ourselves of all that and we fill ourselves with you. We thank you for your presence. Amen. My Father, we just worship you this morning. We've come to give you all the glory and all the thanks, Lord, because you're worthy, Jesus. You're so worthy, Lord. We just want to stay a while. We want to linger a bit longer in your presence because we love you, Jesus. We love to worship, just to be with you, God. We worship you, Father. Mm -hmm. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you. 
The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. I want you to remember that word through Him. You know, on average, every second, two people die. By the end of this altar call, over 300 people would have died. By the end of the hour, over 7,000. And by the end of the day, over 170,000 people would have passed from this life into eternity. Now, I know many of us don't think about death, let alone our, our death. We have plans, we have families, jobs, work, and things that we're doing here. But for a moment, I want you to think about eternity. I want you to think about where you're going once you die. Normally on tombstones or on social media, when somebody passes away, people say, RIP so-and-so, rest in peace so-and-so. And it's a way of bringing comfort during the mourning process. And I understand that, but the truth of the matter is, a large number of people are not resting in peace. You see, the Bible teaches that outside of Jesus, there is a place called hell and it is very real. It's a place that's reserved for the wicked, the unrighteous, the sinner. And while heaven is also a holding place for the righteous, God has a plan for the end of the age. He speaks about it in Revelation, the end of the Bible, the last book where it talks about a new heaven and a new earth. And there's two contrasts here that I wanna share with you that you can think about. Revelation 21 verse four says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And on contrast that with verse eight, the Bible says, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now I know many of us don't wanna think about this, but the truth is scripture is interested in telling you the truth. You see, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is bondage. I would hate for you to perish, die one of these days or in the months or in the years or in the decades to come and you never said yes to Jesus. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Every day we wake up is a day of grace that God gives us. Remember I told you to remember that word through Him? Well, that's the gospel in John 3, 16 and 17. God loved you so much that He doesn't want you to perish, but He sent Jesus. And it is through Jesus that we have everlasting life. Why is that? It's because Jesus died on a cross for our sin so that we would be justified by faith in Him, that we would be 100% clean and purified and holy before a holy almighty God, sinless and spotless before His sight. And the amazing thing about the Bible is that it claims that Jesus rose from the dead and indeed He did. He lives today offering us grace and forgiveness in Him. And I wanna invite you into that so that one day when you pass from this life to the next, truly you are RIP, resting in peace with Him. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? Let's close our eyes, let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, and you can repeat this, Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner in need of your grace. I believe in Jesus Christ, that He died for my sin and that He rose from the dead. And so today, God, I turn away from my sin and I put my faith in You. I thank You that You are now my Lord and my Saviour. And I commit from this moment forward to following Your way, Jesus. And I thank You for Your grace, Lord. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, we would love to get connected with you. Please reach out to us, our details on the screen. And rest assured that in Jesus, one day when we have an end here on this earth, we will be with Him in eternal life as His Word has promised us. God bless you. We hope to hear from you soon. Take care. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, church. We hope you were blessed by the service. I surely was. Just a few quick announcements before we say goodbye. Our daily boosts are back. So from the 21st of September, we will be back, which is next week, Monday, and they'll be running every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Also, don't forget to join the collective every Wednesday at seven o'clock on Facebook Live. It's gonna be a great time spent in the Word. Hi, parents. Convergence Youth will be opening up this week, Friday, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. We're thrilled to be gathering together again with your teenagers. 
Rest assured that all necessary protocols will be kept in place. If you have any queries, please feel free to contact me at rico at graceplace.co.za. Convergence Youth, we cannot wait to see you guys this Friday. Well, that's it from me. I hope you have a great week ahead, church. Stay blessed.